Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hello, hello, Langley. Always good to see you. Hi, Mimi. Great to see you. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> uh, I have to. I have to. On air, share all my gratitude and love for you because I was like this morning, hey, are you able to podcast today? And what's the time difference? And you did all the math for me. And you're like, always so, so accommodating. So thank you so much. You're more than welcome. <laughs> always good to talk to you. And also congratulations, because I'm following you on social, of course, and you did this comrades marathon, yet another, yeah. you know, check off in the box of the million things you've done as you know, um, a triathlete. Is that the right word? I don't see. I, yeah. I asked you off air for the right term for the marathon. And I'm messing up all the <laughs> other things that I've said I would know about. But you do all these like very intense um, endurance, you know, um, races congratulations yeah. on yet another yeah. one thank you so much it's a um so the comrades marathon is a it is a really special event it's um it's the world's oldest ultra marathon and it is the largest in terms of the field you know most ultra marathons these days are kind of run as as trail events you know kind of either mountain races or um you know on and through the single track um, trails um, through the wilderness, whereas this race is run from one city to another, um, and it alternates every year. So you know, the this year we we raced from a, a town by the name of Pietermaritzburg down to a, a place called Durban in the beautiful province of KwaZulu Natal here in in uh, in South Africa, and the race was founded shortly after the the great war the first world war and um by a guy by the name of vic clapham if my memory serves me correctly mm -hmm. and um vic clapham wanted to do, um start something that would honor and commemorate his fallen comrades um you know who fought alongside him in the in in the the first world war uh, for the i guess the british the British Empire, you know, South Africa was part of the the, the British Empire, the British mm. and British Commonwealth. It was still actually at that stage a colony. It was before we were a union. Um, so this race started just with a few competitors, and these people ran in, you know, I mean, shoes that we would look at today and go, "How can you walk five miles in those, <laughs> let alone run fifty-five miles?" Which is what the race is. So, oh wow. Uh, so you know, there's, there's a it's the the race is steeped in history, and you know it it runs um, point to point every year and alternating, as I said. So this year ran it ran down from Peter Maritzburg, which is at altitude, down to the coast, and then next year will be so this year was was a down run, and then next year will be an up run. And I I got to tell you that it's pretty crazy because you think in your mind, well, it's down, therefore it's going to be easier. And uh, when you are 60 kilometers into the race, there's a hill called Fields Hill, which I think is about five kilometers down of quite serious descent. So you drop down very fast and uh, your quadriceps by that stage are already pretty tender. So when you are running down this, I think it's like, a I don't know, six or seven percent gradient uh quite consistently <laughs> for three miles uh, after you've already got you know close to 40 miles in the legs it's it's pretty pretty painful <laughs> oh my gosh okay first and of all thank was, you that, also for converting from miles to kilometers for me as well i feel I, like I think i might be out but you know that was that, that the, this race was 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 in, insane and at that point the pain was crazy and everyone goes through the pain you know whether it be the people who finish the race in five and a half hours which is what the winners do or the people like me right at the back who do it in 10 hours and 10 and a half hours uh oh my god i literally i i went through the halfway mark as the race winner was coming into the stadium at the end to win the race crazy that i mean you know that'll 
show you how slow I am. <laughs> okay. All right. But, well, again, yeah. this is all uh, objective. This is all perspective here and comparative because you're talking about all you superhumans, basically. You guys are like superheroes running this, first of all, running this race to begin with. And I did want to address the whole down up thing, right? Because there is a misconception because it's not like stair, like, oh, I'm going up a flight of stairs or down a flight of stairs because I, I do understand like mechanically the control it takes to not just go tumbling, rolling down the hill, like going down is more on some of your joints. And so your muscles have to work a lot harder. Is that, is that, I mean, yep. like you said, and you were already fatigued. So there is a misconception. Oh, it's all downhill. It's fine. But that's actually a little bit harder, I think, on a lot of the body parts. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and can be on the joints as well. I mean, it, I know a lot of people suffer with their knees on the down run. Right. Um, excuse me. I was I was fortunate in that in that regard with the joints. I think my I just had muscle, a lot of muscle pain, but uh, fortunately my joints were okay. I think I did a, the right amount of training in terms of the mileage, and 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 I didn't try and push myself too far out of my comfort zone during the race. And I think okay. you know so. The, I was, I don't know if you can be, call it, call it being kind to yourself over that distance, but I'm as kind to myself as I could be. And, uh, and, and my legs are feeling fine now. You know, they, it's they Monday and Tuesday, they were sore. Okay. And then I woke up yesterday, which was Wednesday feeling. Yeah. I woke up feeling, <laughs> feeling, feeling somewhat human yesterday for the first time. And then today I actually, I, I felt completely normal, which was great and a huge relief because I've actually, um, for reasons unfathomable to me, uh, I, I uh, I'm competing in a half Ironman in France next weekend. So of course you are, so. of course you are. You know when you wrote me and you're like, oh, I can't talk. You know, end of July or because I'll be I'll be going through the south of France. I'm like, this is not yeah. some like I'm going to go to wineries and leisurely drive. I bet you anything. <laughs> He is doing gonna, something physical. Yeah, no, I'm going to be doing that too. There's going to be uh, there's going to be some rest for sure, and uh, and uh, some long leisurely bike rides, but also just one little race thrown in there. One for little race. Oh my gosh, yeah. I, I'm I'm yeah. super embarrassed, and I'm totally going to share this with you because you'll you'll get a kick out of it. You know, I was like, okay, I'm going on an eight mile uh, hike, quote unquote, uh, in Machu Picchu. So I'm not doing the 26 oh. mile camping thing, right? But I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Originally, I wanted to just take the train ride over, but then you know my cousins are doing this birthday thing, and they invited us, and we're like, you know what, we can do it. And I am not an outdoors person. I'm allergic to like every plant, and I'm like, so I think I have to wear a mask actually. But so I'm trying to quote unquote train for this hike, uh, Langley, and it's all an ascent, so it's all uphill, so yeah. it's all going up, but it's literally yeah. like eight miles and you're like yeah slow people like me took 10 hours i think it's going to take me eight hours to do this hike of well, eight they, miles and the air is thin up there right it's it's up it's much yeah, which is much like is pretty high i want to say eight thousand yeah. feet or something or yeah well i, mean, it's, I think it's, it's like 10 eight, it's like goes from seven to 13 but i don't think i'm going to the right. 13 i think i'll be in the okay. eight range and coming from below sea level in florida yeah it's gonna yeah. be pretty dramatic for me so yes up but... in the, just just having a little hike up in the andes <laughs> yeah a little a little you know leisurely That's walk a... but it's not a Always race Peru, so I'm very jealous. That's oh great. Oh my gosh, he... you should come August, August. You know, right after oh. your Iron Man, just take a flight over to Peru and uh, and ju yeah. jump in. Yeah, and it'll be embarrassing <laughs> though because I'll be like, "All right, see you in eight hours." You'd be there in like an hour. For you, eight miles is like a warm up. <laughs> well, you know, I uh, everything's relative, I suppose, because <laughs> there are certain things that you can do that would take <laughs> years just to. <laughs> A little part of so that is um, very kind of you sir that is so kind but yeah i mean just kudos i find it so incredible because i know the amount of discipline it takes to you know kind of put your mind to things and you are always setting these um short-term goals like they're so close together you know people yeah. i think maybe go a lifetime I'm, I'm almost thinking it's a bit of an addiction for you <laughs> it, is. it is i mean it's, it's yeah. yeah 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 no it, it is addicted to greatness. 
Ah, <laughs> uh, no. My partner is totally, she just calls me on it straight away. She says, you know, you're, you're an exercise addict. So it's, mm. uh, yeah, I am. Well, there is worse things to be addicted to, but yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, I used to be, I used to, um, and I, I can't even, I just hate to even to even say it now, but I was, you know, I used to be a smoker. I used to be, mm-hmm. I used to smoke a pack a day and, uh, and I, I traded that addiction in for, for this one. So well, well I think done. It's just a, a better choice, better life yeah. choice. No, but I think, I think that gives you the perspective, right? It gives you that mm. comparative, like, could you even imagine trying to go 50 miles or two miles as a smoker it's just the lung capacity and everything i i, I mean yeah. you probably feel like oh this is so easy because now you can breathe yeah. in the way i just i just congratulations again i think it's cool and i always already uh, you know 10 minutes in i've learned about a history when i'm talking to you because you know you're full yeah. of you're full of so much knowledge and so thank you for that and teaching me about the comrades marathon that sounds so fascinating and um just thinking like you said versus like a trail and like the normal you know path like going from city to yeah. city is fascinating do you get a chance to like see what's what's going on around you or is it just like oh, yeah. tunnel vision go oh, oh, what is so great about the race so you know the the race as i said is steeped in history i mean not all of it is good um you know the, the race itself i think that has always had a positive uh, message and a, has been a positive experience for the people that have competed but uh, the the i suppose the negative side of the history around the race was not the around the race itself but around the society obviously you know uh, apartheid south africa black people were not allowed to compete in the race until the 1970s mm. wow. and uh, and women were not allowed to compete in the race uh, until the 1970s because you know the kind of sexist uh patriarchal society that we were part of then then yeah. just uh you know decided that women were too delicate and you know yes. not strong enough couldn't possibly do that and uh you know it's uh yeah i think uh i think we can all agree that women have proved those those <laughs> men <laughs> have made them eat their words yes there was a yes. really there was a brilliant incident that happened uh in the in the early in the 1980s mm. when a woman by the name of Frith van der Merwe not only broke the record that was only broken this last sunday wow. she didn't just break the break the the uh women's record she um th- there was a male runner who was like he was a, a good runner he was uh set to finish in the top 20 which is like silver medal territory and very close to gold and uh he had he had uh, famously or infamously said in a in an interview just before the race uh, that if, uh, if if a woman ever passed him on the comrades, he would turn right around and run back to the run back to the start. And sure enough, on the year that Fritz van Amerva broke the record, she finished thirteenth overall, and she po- ran past this guy about three quarters of the way through the through the race. And he had to eat his words. And, you know, I suppose to his credit, he did. He turned around and he ran all the way back to the start. No, seriously? Yeah, so, so he'd already run the better part of, you know, he'd run more than half of, of 55 oh. miles. And he turned around. Wow. Oh, my God. He, okay. Because he opened his stupid mouth just a little yes. too wide. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, but I'm actually impressed that he did that because... Yeah. You yeah. know, some he, people say stuff, it. but at least he owned it. At least he owned it. So, yeah. I mean, yes, that's yeah. fantastic. Oh, gosh, yeah. it must have felt so good to be her, <laughs> like running yeah, by him. Absolutely. Not even just, I mean, let alone finishing 13th, but like running by yeah. him. Oh, yeah. man. I'm just yeah. like patting him but, on the back, like, see ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's all, so there's all this footage. There, there's, a, there's a great documentary that was released this year oh. called Down about the down run and i'm imagining next year there will be a similar documentary titled up up. (laughs) (laughs) that may be released just before the race but um i watched it and there's so much great footage and great you know film footage of the race um 
and and just so many you know and i learned a lot about the race just watching that documentary but i've also okay. read a couple of great great books about it but the you know you you asked whether you know i can you, one one takes in everything around you one takes in the absolute uh Wow, I, I, I'm trying to find the words to describe the the crowd because it's like you go through some pretty hard moments and times, you know, during the course of the race where you have to really dig deep and you kind of you get in, you can get into your head and kind of start questioning whether or not this is a good idea and <laughs> am I actually really going to be able to do this? And the crowd really just constantly gives you um the i guess the endorphins the 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 dopamine hits that you need yeah all the way down and because all the runners have their names on their on their race numbers you'll hear people calling your name out you know the most kind of um unexpected places and times oh. and it really just kind of boys you and the i mean the thousands tens and tens of thousands of people that line the race course from early in the morning until late in the afternoon, just cheering everyone on. And uh, and there is a very special camaraderie between the runners themselves. I missed the, the person who was seconding me and uh, meeting me along the course uh, with with my fuel, with my drink and my and my 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 food and my gels and what what have you. We missed each other at the first meeting meetup point. Okay. And I then had another thirty kilometers to run, and I didn't have any. I, I didn't have any food. They, I mean, they have aid stations along the way, like with most marathons, and they're very yeah. well organized. So you can get coke and water, and they sometimes have, you know, salted baby baby potatoes, and they'll have cut up okay. pieces of banana and oranges and things like that. But you know, I had I had very specific nutrition that I that I trained with and that I'd set up so I I was kind of running going what the hell am I going to do now and I was able to rely on the kindness of other runners um just by chatting along the way and saying yeah I missed my my second and uh, I, don't, I don't have any food guys and women immediately were just reaching for into their race belts for gels and candy and you know uh, I saw a friend uh, who was seconding his his partner, his girlfriend, and uh, he shouted out, "Do you need anything?" And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> give me some food, please." And he handed oh. me a couple of bananas, which I desperately wanted. And, and oh some, my gosh! So can you gel. explain what seconding means to the yeah non understanding yeah, so, marathon humans? Yeah. So I mean, you basically you have a second who is your second, the same way that in the old in olden in the old days in the old days. Uh, <laughs> When gentlemen would settle a dispute by yes. having a duel and trying to kill each other, whether it was with a sword or a pistol, they would mm. they would have a, their second who would right. be there to you know basically try and look after them and help them and would uh, get their sword ready or their pistol yes. and you know steady them basically right. and they you know say right you have to go and do this idiotic thing that you signed up for now. <laughs> <laughs> and, not, and not run away and be branded a coward forever. So, so off you go. So it's a lot like that. You've got someone who got your back, who is there to cheer you on and say, right, you idiot, you entered this <laughs> 55 mile race. Now you better go run it. And here is your food and your drink and go ah, and do it. So, okay, so they have all it of these amazing them. people um, are whizzing around the countryside on different roads, on alternate routes, you know, getting to the next spot uh okay. you know 20 or 30 k's down the road um to to give their athletes mm. uh whatever they need so those okay. are the second yeah those oh wow yeah. maybe i could do that <laughs> you know it's a very important job yeah yeah maybe it's, i could uh... do that i don't i know that it, that running is not in my future or you know these marathons but Oh, so much respect yeah. for it. And I'm always fascinated. I'm, I love that you you just came off of that. So it's so fresh. I was like, I'm going to have to talk to you about it because I'm always fascinated uh, by your, you know, your physical ability to, and mental, really. I think it's even more mental than anything to to do something that intense. So how fun. Do and something stupid. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I like the description of the second because it's like, okay, off you go to your death. Good luck. Yeah. Or not. Death or not. Just yeah. depends how it works out. And uh, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, but are you going to do the, are you going to do the up since you've done the down? Yeah. Yeah, of course you are. <laughs> <laughs> they give out a special medal if you do back-to-back -back runs as well. So, oh, but that's quite a cool medal to get. So, okay. Uh, okay. yeah, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I, I almost wasn't able to do this job because of a film and uh, then the film's dates got pushed and pushed and pushed and eventually. So I actually ended up being able to do it. Unfortunately, I did carry on training even with, when it looked like I wasn't going to be able to do the race. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my uh, philosophy when it comes to entering races is, uh, number one, they, they do seem to be a, a great way to, to book a job. It's like I, I feel like whenever I enter a race or plan a, a vacation, especially when I've bought the tickets and paid for the entry, it's like I almost always land up booking a job slap bang in the middle of that race of or course. holiday. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you know, it's a good way of manifesting work. There it is. Uh, and uh, <laughs> But uh, it's it's also it's you know if if I am fortunate enough to to uh, to book a, a job that is is taking place when the, when the race is on, it's not the end of the world. I've always been yeah. quite philosophical about being able to let that go because it is so much about the training and just maintaining a you know healthy way of of being and you know the the running and the riding all of that stuff is really good and important for my mental health. And I think for a lot of people, it's a great stress release. And, um, you know, so so I, I think even though my, my partner is like, you're crazy to do something that, that distance, uh, at the end of the day, I think she's happier for it because I come home happy and not yeah. grumpy. Right. And, and right. you know, a lot of people, I think there's if the, with runners especially, their spouses will often just say to them, you need to go for a run because if they don't, <laughs> Like, you know, some people get hangry and runners, I think, get get a bit uh, get a bit grumpy when they haven't had their, their uh, daily okay. exercise. Okay, well, that makes sense. Okay, last running question, and then it's going to be warrior. It's on, it's on. Um, yeah. Just because I've been having this obsession with shoes and, like, the right shoes to wear on my little baby hike and all this stuff. And then I, because I, I typically only wear Kung Fu shoes or like high heels, yeah. you know, so it's like one or the other, yeah. and neither of those are good for, for any of this. And so I'm like going mm -hmm. through this whole shoe thing, but I'm so curious, like, yes. do you go through multiple pairs of shoes prepping for this? And what kind of shoes do you wear? Yeah. Okay. I'm so glad you asked this question because it is a, a topic of conversation that's come up quite a lot for me this year. Okay. You know, I always in the past, uh, when, I, when I was doing marathons or um, Ironmans, whatever it may have been, whatever, you know, trail running, road running, uh, ultra distance tries, whatever, the, I always suffered from backache, lower backache, um, after mm. a long training session and after the race. Um, and my knees hurt quite a lot and I used to suffer from excuse me uh plantar fasciitis quite a lot and uh and 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 dodgy ankles and I you know like many other people I read a a, a great book about running called Born to Run Born to Run <laughs> yeah and uh, and and they spoke about you know the, how the the Ramuri uh, people and down in the Copper Canyon the Tarahumara tribe they you know yeah. they they run in sandals and they'll run hundred milers in their leather sandals that they they make themselves which are obviously you know flat right very little thing and and no drop so no raised heel at the back mm -hmm. and uh, you know and for those of you who haven't read the book the, a large part of it is dedicated to to that and the running shoe industry and talking about you know talking about that debating whether you know modern running shoes are a good thing or a bad thing and right. so i actually 
they released the Born to Run two, which is yeah. is not is not as much of a narrative as as Born to Run was. This is more a kind of guide for running. Okay. It's like a, a training guide, and okay. it also talks a lot about nutrition and it talks about shoes. Mm. And uh, I I decided it was time for me to actually give it a try, try some minimalist running shoes. Okay. Uh, and I went out and bought a pair of, um, I'll say the brand, it's Ultras. Okay. Uh, and I initially bought a pair of Ultra uh, trail shoes, and then I, uh, I really liked them so much, and they felt so good. Uh, and I felt so good in them after a, you know, a run that I went out and bought a pair of road shoes as well. And I I did, my physiotherapist had told me that, you know, I should, I should kind of wean myself into these shoes quite right, gradually, right. switching from the, like, because I was running on a um, A6 before with a 10 mil drop okay. and the heel. And, uh, you know, I've always run an A6 for as long as I can remember. The only other running shoe I ran in before until they stopped making them was the old, um nike air pegasus which i really loved because they had quite okay. a wide they had a quite a wide toe area okay and so i've got quite quite wide i've got quite wide toes so and i've always felt with the modern running shoes that my my toes felt cramped right you know, they okay. felt they felt really constricted and at the end of a marathon it would be always be such a relief to take your shoes off and um and so that was the one thing I noticed immediately with these is that my toes felt great. My feet felt just comfortable. They felt that they could move about enough, but, you know, but they also felt comfortable and snug. They, they felt right. protected. And uh, so I, I worked my way up, to, you know, to being able to run a marathon. And I ran my, to run the comrades, you have to run a, a qualifying marathon. Oh, okay. Uh, and so I ran my qualifier in a pair of ultras, zero drops. And you know what? I mean, I, I felt so good afterwards. I was like, that's it. I'm done. I gave away my, my running shoes the next day, all of them, my trail shoes, my road shoes. Wow. I, I, I gave them to some, some uh, needy runners who were wanting and uh, some running shoes. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, I'm I've made the I've made the transition, I've made the change. So um for me these shoes really work and right. uh and I I honestly had zero discomfort on my joints during the race and uh and and from a muscular perspective also I just felt so much better than I've ever felt after a race, after a marathon. So mm. I think there's a lot to be said for giving it a try, you know. Right. Give it a yeah, try. I mean, every human is different. But yeah, yeah, but I mean, I love to hear that story that you adapted. And total disclaimer, like I didn't actually read The Full Born to Run. My husband reads every fitness book there is known to person and I get the Oscar yeah. notes. So he just gives me the whole lowdown yeah. and it makes me sound really good. Like I know about you all get- these books, but I read comic books, you know. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, yeah. Born to run, of course, naturally. But the reason. Have you, have you seen the new, sorry, I'm just going to butt in. Uh, have no? you seen the new animated Spider-Man? The, the, yes. Across the we just My saw son it. Took yesterday. Yeah. What did you think? I loved it. Yeah. The animation I loved is it. Loved it. In- loved it. Incredible. I love the first Great. one. I love the second one. Um, yeah. I think they're like Tom the best Felipe. Marvel movies out oh, there. No. Actually, I suppose the spoiler alert. Yes. Spoiler alert can't believe they left you hanging at the end like that <laughs> yeah you're like oh i guess we're gonna be here for two more hours <laughs> yeah yeah See you next uh, yeah so it's building with the music at the end right yeah. and oscar's like oh i guess there's gonna be the trilogy <laughs> because you can feel like no there's no way they're gonna wrap this up in five minutes oh my no. god it was so good like we could take a whole episode yeah. to talk about that new spider-man because yeah. It, it's just it's my favorite spider-man's you know those it, they do such an amazing job i just i love it so yeah. much from the writing to the execution to the you know the animation like you said the, my only gripe is that because yeah. i'm very old and slow processing anytime they would come up with a little fun fact about like issue whatever and like it was too quick i yeah. couldn't read it too very quick. quickly it was too quick for yeah. me i was like wait, wait wait what go back go back pause rewind oh darn it i'm in the theater yeah. so yeah <laughs> but it was perfect yeah. i just loved it yeah. so much um yeah. but yes fun. i saw the new spider-man so cool 
Sorry. And now I remember where you were when I. Oh, uh, yes. No, no. I'm very excited to hear you talk about the whole born to run transition as a real. I mean, I know there's runners and they're not fake runners, but as someone yeah. who's so dedicated to running, um, because yeah. coming from a Kung Fu shoe background, I've never yes. had a lift in my shoe. No. Right. And so no. um, so we bought zero shoes, which are pretty much the same concept, right? They're for this, for this Machu yeah. hike, you know, that I'm all stressed out about for my eight miles. Um, but you know, yeah. it's help. but for me, I'm like, oh my gosh. But then I realized I must've had the wrong size because my toes kind of hurt when I've been walking, just, wa I mean, just walking. Like we went to the theme park uh -huh. with my cousins one day. And that was, to me, that was the best training for this hike. It could have been, it was like 13 hours of walking around in this theme park was crazy but I've been going yeah. you know just on small leisurely a couple few miles but I'm like my toes shouldn't hurt right so I think I need a bigger size but I love to be able to splay my feet because I'm almost always yeah. barefoot or I'm in a kung yeah. fu shoe which is flat and very minimal so I yeah. really love that um that that had come out and that there was a connectivity for people and that that mm -hmm. real runners gave it a try because I that's what's natural for me so yeah 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 there was the, the, another thing in the Born to Run 2 book that came up was it was the, 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 the writers of the opinion that our running shoes that we buy should be, uh, I think, one to one and a half sizes bigger than the shoes, than, than our foot size. That makes sense. You know, to give you that room. That makes For complete you. sense. Plus, in this yeah. this hiking thing, I'm like, I don't want to wear really thin socks. I want them to be a little bit, you know like more athletic yeah. socks. So I'm like, oh my gosh, my foot feels so cramped. So yeah. 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 I'm so glad that I'm talking to you today. So I can, because I've got like four boxes of shoes in my living room. And I'm like sitting here trying them all on because I was like, well, <laughs> the one I bought that I thought was fine, I bought half size up, didn't work. Okay. Enough about shoes and running. Um, although I know uh -huh. people find this fascinating because you are, <laughs> um, you know, such a inspiration in that regard, but <gasps> Finally, Warrior Three. After, like you said, you you know you, it was filmed so long ago. We talked uh, around that time as well, and um, yeah, it's finally here. Trailers have been dropping. Uh, yeah. Fans are going bananas. We've yeah. seen some new new characters. We've seen our favorite characters come out, and um, honestly, yeah. I, I say this you know all the time. I really just want to know everything Olivia is going to be wearing. Like that's my major yeah. excitement, in addition to all the fun stuff. But yes, oh my goodness, what was it like being back? And um, you know, rating uh, Hoon Lee as a writer, one to ten. Yeah. <laughs> I'd give him a solid eight <laughs> for his first, you know, his first season. <laughs> love he's it, great. love it. No, oh he's great. Gosh. I'm proud of him, man. And and it's so great that he's, yeah. It was it was just really cool being able to 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 perform in an episode that he'd written. And yeah, uh, it was it was so cool. It was a really special for all of us. Um, obviously for for Hoon himself. So. We are very proud of him, and uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, so great to be to be back and and slipping back almost so seamlessly into into the relationships that you know the different actors have with each other and that the different characters have with each other. It was like back into my clandestine meetings, you know, <laughs> with Doc. Yeah. And then, you know, kind of running in my regular kind of run-ins with, 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 with Kieran. Uh, and then, you know, some, some awesome new characters that the audience will get to meet this season. Yeah. And, and a few of those characters are people that, that um, Buckley has interactions with. And uh, yeah, there's some interesting I guess obstacles that get thrown in 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 old Walter's uh, path this season. You know, some. I think he thinks he's on he's on the easy road in many regards now that uh, that Mayor Blake has 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 is demised. Mm. But uh, wow, man, you, he he's uh, yeah he ha gets a bit of a wake up call in that regard. There's some. Some spanners thrown in in Buckley's works for sure, and um, and also some some interesting kind of positive relationships that that uh, 
that are certainly beneficial for him and okay. uh, adv advancing his you know his political career mm -hmm. uh, but but yeah he 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 uh he comes up against some some stuff <laughs> oh my gosh i can't wait i can't wait yeah it's so funny because i always now, because I've have had the pleasure of speaking you, to you so much online, but also offline, and I, you're mm. you're Langley or, or Lamley. I've got a little <laughs> lamb behind me, <laughs> Lamley. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like, oh yeah, but he's Buckley on Warrior, yeah. and you're like, uh. But the first time I spoke to you, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so weird because I just spend all my time hating you as a character and then getting to meet you. And now it's a bit of the reverse. I think going in and going to watch the show, I'm going to be yeah. a little bit jarred again, you know, because I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. this is my history, fun, loving, marathon, triathlete running, you know, person that's, you know, yeah. half the time cooking dinner when I'm speaking to, you know, I, it's yeah. just, it's going to be jarring, I think, to kind of go back and 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 be back into yeah. seeing you as that character. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I don't take it personally. It's, 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 it's uh, <laughs> that means you're doing a good job, actually. <laughs> I, yeah, I get a lot of really, really nice messages from people online, and they say, "I, you know, I mean this as the as a big compliment, but I absolutely hate your character so yeah. much." <laughs> <laughs> when, well, you on, when you come on my screen, I actually want to throw something at you. Yeah. So it's so true it's like oh but what's funny is every time we're watching any show and then you know there's the quote-unquote you know um antagonist or the villain oscar's like well my husband's like well there's got to be a bad guy in the show i mean there's got to be someone to hate in the show or otherwise it's yeah. not a show so yeah. but like, but what's fascinating like, about warriors like, like you get you gotta, you gotta have someone you gotta have someone to hate yeah <laughs> But 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 what's great about this show is like there's always like a moment though where it's like wait but they're a human, but wait yeah. there's a complexity to the character. It's not just like monster bad no. guy and hero good guy. No. I mean the show is no. so great in that way where all the characters you can you can feel mm. a bit of humanity and each one of them different people will have kind of a a relationship with in terms of seeing you know yourself reflected or pieces of yourself yeah. and um Absolutely. yeah so it's it's such a great show in that regard and then the action yeah yeah and then the action so uh some yeah a couple of a couple of cast members this season who are physically just so so good mm. um and uh i mean mark dukaskis has joined us this season so yes he has yes he has there's been a lot of excitement about that and uh with good reason. Yes. And, and he brings it, man. Was it your first yeah. time meeting him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got a I've only of heard like the best of things from all my martial arts community that that, oh that know him well. He's he is just he's 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 just the nicest human being. He's just he's just he's you know, it's just he's just really he's like he's he's a lot like Hoon, but a lot happier. A lot like more bubbly. Like Hoon is 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 one of the loveliest human beings you'll ever meet, but he has this kind of facade that is, you know, glass is half empty kind of facade. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's that it's that rich voice, you know, it's so like subdued yeah. and it's so it's not ever his voice can't possibly be bubbly. It just wouldn't go no. together. No. You know, that no, that deep, velvety, you know, yeah. uh, that voice. Yeah. So no. Yeah, yeah, he can't be bubbly. Bubbly would not be an adjective for Hoon for sure. No. Uh, no I can't be very serious, Hoon Lee. Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm very thoughtful as well. <laughs> oh my gosh. He is the best. And I love that we can talk about him yeah. like this because he knows like we just adore him so much and love him so been... much. I, I thought about him. I would that's the one he's probably one of the people I would never choose to be my second. As much as I would trust him in, in almost every other way, I would not trust Hoon to spend ten and a half hours with a bag full of food that I <laughs> needed to eat. He'd be like, well, does he really need this apple? Yeah. Oh, he, no. Exactly. Yeah. This muffin? Nah. You know, <laughs> he's not really a muffin kind of guy. Whereas <laughs> I... <laughs> yeah. This, I, I, I can see this. I can see this. I haven't had the pleasure of eating with him, but I can imagine. But 
Yeah, I just as a shout out, like he has been just such a um, great human to know and has been such a, a comfort for me on and off air, like just to be able to like bounce ideas off of whether it's questions I have, but also things going on in API community. And he's just been like amazing, always takes my call. It's, yeah. I mean, and he's so busy. So that's just the type of person yeah. he is. But now it's good to know he will eat your food. So <laughs> that's the one thing about Hoon Lee. He will eat your food. One area, one area where, you know, all bets are off. Yes, yes. Um, you know, what was really nice is I got to catch up with Perry and uh, he's my fellow activist. Like like I, I always yeah. say, yeah, you know, you go to yep. New York and you end up in a rally with with Perry. That's just with what that. happens. That I mean, that's what happened last time I was in New York. And I had yeah. him on and he goes, you know, you know, um, you know, Langley's just so nice. He feels like because he lives in Cape Town, he has to be the host of everyone. And if he's always taking people to lunch <laughs> or eat or inviting them and cooking and doing things. I'm like, I know. So everyone just has such a love for for you as the resident uh, Cape Town oh. host. And um, it, yeah. it just sounds like such a such a great reunion that you all had. Yeah, oh, oh, it was so great. I mean, and and Sarah and I got to host the whole you know, uh, the whole cast um, and some of the writers and directors right right at the end of, of the season nice. in our house, uh, our home, which we've been renovating for the last couple of years. And we finally got it to a, a state where we, we felt comfortable to actually entertain people in it because nice. it had been a complete wreck before that. <laughs> and it was just a really special day. I, I'll give you one I'll take three guesses as to what I served everybody for lunch. <laughs> Lamb? <laughs> ah, how did you guess, Mimi? <laughs> yeah. And it was and it was it was just really it was a really nice way to kind of uh because a lot of people flew out very shortly after that. So it was mm, just okay. really nice to end the season just kind of kind of having a a last kind of connection with everyone. Um yeah, like that. And uh it's great to see Shannon. Shannon came out right at the end oh, of the season, uh, towards the end of the season as well. And uh, oh man, she 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 brought she brought the the cast all um, some really special Bruce Lee uh, embroidered jackets. Of course, she her. did. Yeah, uh, in her luggage all the way from from LA. So that was really cool. Oh my um, gosh. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, I mean it's so special for us all to 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 be able to to get back on the get back on the horse you know mm -hmm. and uh we're we're so excited for everyone to see season three but I think it's just it's gonna knock everyone's socks off it's kind of the stakes are all just kind of with every season getting higher and uh you know relationships are kind of yeah there's some, gonna be some interesting some interesting dynamics happening in in relationships this season. Um, oh my goodness! Some oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> you're killing me. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I'm trying to think of how I can I can tease you a bit without actually giving anything away. But I, I can't. know, I know, and because listeners are going, just... "Why are you doing this, Langley? Yeah. Why do you hate us?" <laughs> oh God, no! It's uh, there's going to be yeah, people. People will be will be probably pulling their hair out and going, "No!" And yeah. Some people will be Shedding a tear or two, oh. and some people, yeah, oh, there's, yeah, there's some, there'll be some interesting things happening this season. Oh, my goodness. Well, we're going to have to keep talking as the season progresses then, and, you know, yeah. I, mean, I think, I, I think I said this last time, but you and Hoon need to, we need to have one with both of you on, because you guys, you know, yeah. talk about each other off, uh, you know, on and off, so, like, we, we need to we do one just oral. Food, we is, just talk about is, food. I'm all about it, just, like. Okay, cool. Because that's, yeah. I mean, that is, Hoon and I, we do share a mutual love of and for good food. So I am right there with you guys. <laughs> okay. Although um, I can be trusted to not eat your food. <laughs> well, you say that, Mimi. And you have such a sweet, disarming smile. I wonder, though. <laughs> That's not a ruse. Right, right. Well, there's only one way to find out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you my got, gosh, you got no. To get, 
Cape Town and try out some of our restaurants. I, they're, they're really it is on like the top of my list. So in real story is I've been researching and I know that everyone talks safari, safari, safari when they think of Africa and South Africa and all of these things in West or East Africa. Yes. Yeah. And so, but I'm just like, I know there's so much more. And so I'm trying to figure out like, okay, what is this trip going to look like? Obviously Cape Town is going to be um, a big part of it. I am trying to make this happen next year actually so so we'll see and um you know regarding the the filming though when i did talk to some of the other cast members they mentioned like it was a little bit crazy because there was still really strict covid restrictions so you couldn't like just walk yeah. over and watch each other film like you did in the past as no. much so was that yeah. kind of difficult as well and you, you had to that just hang out to be honest it was hard because we 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 have in the past always really just hung out together on set and gone and supported each other yeah. Um, and we weren't able to do that to the extent that we, we have been in the past. And we weren't allowed to hang out as much as we have been in the past. Yeah. Um, the restrictions within the country itself relaxed as the season uh, wore on and progressed. So, you know, things opened up a little, little bit towards the end of the season. But when we started, it was it was crazy. And, you know, we also we we. We had so many different units shooting at uh, at one time. Um, it was it was challenging from a logistic point of view because you've got your main unit and then you've got a you know um, a splinter unit towards the beginning and the end of each block, each you know new block, old block. You'll have one unit finishing up uh, with with another unit starting up on the other on the next block and shooting simultaneously. And then you have, you know, Brett's fight unit, fight unit, which is a, a, a whole a whole different unit all on its own. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you've got actors sometimes who will be on three different units in one day. Okay. Um, and that was a bit that, that I think that some of the actors found that that was quite challenging. Um, and then, you know, so to then also have try and find time to socialize on top of that with the COVID restrictions was almost impossible. Mm. So we just had to suddenly for the first time ever, Buckley actually made it into the stunt tent. Uh, yeah. A couple of times, I was going to ask you about that. Week. Cause I know you personally yeah. was like, I'll go and yeah. do the warm ups, but like, okay. Yeah, I did. And I made a, a, a habit of, of going at least once a week. And then sometimes I try to go twice a week. It was, quite a it's quite a drive from my my house to to where the uh oh okay. uh, where the stunt the stunt team uh, you know trained every day so i but i i got in there and uh a couple of times i was there late and i uh, Brett, i love Brett daily but geez he's uh, he's a hard taskmaster if you're late man cuz he, he then he then makes you do all sorts of crazy exercises but he also makes everyone else it's kind of like the military where yeah so one person's late has everybody has to everyone. it's a team yeah yeah there we go which is great i love it but of course <laughs> you feel like feel like you want the world to swallow you up when it's you <laughs> right of course of course everyone's uh, like oh like, you got here yeah. late thanks for the extra uh, push-ups and yeah, and as if we didn't to the you stomach already <laughs> oh my gosh i i do need to call brett because we need to have a conversation about all the epic things that we were seeing from behind the scenes and um yeah. it seemed like they were really pushing the envelope oh, this wow. season oh wow yeah unreal unreal some of the fight sequences are just insane mm -hmm. and uh, yeah what is great is that Brett, he's, he's always happy to share uh, his, like the pre visits that they would make. So you yeah. go in there and I would often go and, and do it, uh, just just train in the morning with the guys and then and be able to see uh, a pre vis for one of the big sequences that we had coming up, one of the big fight scenes that we had coming up like on a regular basis. So I would always get to see it beforehand before they filmed it. So even though we weren't allowed to be on set as much as we had been to watch things like, you know, those big sequences, at least we got to have an idea and a, and a taste of how amazing they are going to look. Mm. And I'm, you know, I'm so excited to see it, see them all myself. I haven't, um, I haven't seen the, the new season yet myself. So yeah. 
Are you going to be three. watching it live with everyone else, or are you going to preview it like this yeah, week? Yeah, no, no. I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch live, and so okay. we've. Um, I I won't be in the states at that time. I'm going to be in France, so okay. uh, I'm I'm. I don't think Max is available. Or, uh, I'm not sure if it's available in France. So I have to find out if Max is available in France. If Max is not available in France, then I'm gonna have to watch the they they kindly do send out screeners for us mm -hmm. um, to watch if we're not able to watch live, so that we can also interact with fans on a you know kind of live basis. Yeah. So I'll definitely do that. Oh my goodness! Sure. I am so excited. Yes, me too. <laughs> and uh, the Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, basically the Rotten Tomatoes fans voted Warrior, the TV show that they are most excited about in June. 100%. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Cool. Well-deserved. And it is so true. I mean, not just because the show is awesome and we're looking forward to it, but also because it feels like so such a long time between the season mm -hmm. this round. You know, like you just, the anticipation yeah. is, is very much building and I'm positive it's going to live up to all of the hype. So, um, yeah. Very excited for you. Well, congratulations on all of it. Uh, just the, the, the season. I know One Piece drops soon, or is it? Uh, yeah. No, soon. Yeah. I'm not allowed What's to give it? a date. Um, I know okay. the date, and I'm not allowed to say. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Okay. But I'm like, I think. As to when it is. But it's, I can tell you it's this year. Uh, right, so. right, right. Yeah. Well, IMDb told me it's this year, too. <laughs> yeah. But they sometimes switch too, so you never know. But yeah, that's what I was like. I think I remembered yeah. that being from sometime this year, but I was like, okay, I didn't miss it, did I? But yeah, I figured it was, no. I would have heard. So that's very exciting. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about that when that releases too. And this gives yeah, me more no. reasons to always talk to you. That'll be, that'll be great. That'll be, be right. fun. And listen, you congratulating me. I'm con big congratulations to you for getting your, for getting your bill passed. I mean, that that's Thank you. no small feat. Well done, man. I'm, I was really Thank happy you. for you. Proud to know you when I saw you, you achieve that. That's, uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> that's uh, that's big. <laughs> it is. It was. Um, it was. It's kind of how I would describe your run. Like, oh my gosh, that sounds like it's really hard, and I, I definitely don't know what that's like because you're until you do something that intense and. I can't mm. even describe to people what it's like to work on a legislative bill in Florida on education. And it was very challenging. I can, I can imagine. So, but so challenging and so, and so much like training for an ultra distance event and that you've got to just keep putting in the hours and slogging yes. away, plodding 100%. away. And, yeah. And I, I guess, I guess, you know, people don't, they don't see the, they don't see the, the you know, the legwork that you you surely uh, had to do. Yeah, thank see you the, for that. The, the glory moment when you're allowed <laughs> to actually that it got passed. It's like, right, right, exactly. It's like, oh, yeah. great, a bill got passed. Oh, that's nice. You yeah. know, oh, that's go oh, good, yeah. good for you. You know, but yes, no. Um, there's yeah. Thank you for that. There is a lot of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I had to go to Tallahassee many times and lots of hours yeah. of the day I didn't have that had to get dedicated. So yes, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I've always valued your input as we talk about history, as we talk about society and all of the the political landscape of the crazy of America um, that, mm. that you witness. And also, you know, also in your country and, and, and the dynamic of everything. I always, I always value those conversations. So appreciate, I appreciate that so much. And I know mm. that you have to go and prepare dinner. And, um, by the way, what's for dinner? <laughs> Tacos. I know it's not Tuesday, but hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we will release this on a Tuesday. So appropriately, it will be Taco Tuesday. So there it is. Ah, um, <laughs> you knew. Yes, this is always released on knew. Tuesdays. Tuesday is my podcast <laughs> release date. So Taco Tuesday. Amazing. Love it. Um, yeah. Always a pleasure, Langley. Uh, my best oh. to all you and yours there. And just uh, one day we <laughs> shall dine in Cape Town together. Or if you for some reason want to come to Orlando, please do. Come to Florida. <laughs> I would love to. I will. You. <laughs> okay. Amazing. All right. Thank well, so until next happy. time, we will talk more Warrior once the season hits. <laughs> and then when this One Piece finally release date happens and um, yeah. we'll, we'll get a lot more from you at that time. So Langley awesome. Kirkwood, everybody. Hey, thank you, Sipu Mumi. Bye-bye. <laughs> That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sipu Mimi Chan Show. 
Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Chan on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. 